Do you remember? Right. So I, I believe that IWA uh, had more of the relationship with the WWF. So uh, at the time, you tell me if I'm wrong, but yeah. uh, how did you yeah. uh, come on uh, the WWE's at the time's radar? Well, the story goes is that I think Bruce Pritchard was, uh, they was in town. They, were, they sent Bruce Pritchard to scope out IWA talent, and he was in town, maybe I think in his hotel room or something, and he was flipping through a channel, and he saw my dad's promotion. And I guess I popped up on his screen. And then when he went back, he recommended me to the office. And then a couple of months later, I got a call. My dad gets a call, I think, from Briscoe, Gerald Briscoe. And then I was sent to, I think, uh, the Carolinas to do dark matches. I worked, uh, who did I work? I worked Tommy Jimmer was my first dark match. And then I worked Jamie Noble. And then after that, they, uh, a few months later, they signed me and they sent me to Louisville. Were you sent there to be trained or were you sent there to be molded into the WWE style? Yeah, I think it's kind of to be molded. You know what I mean? I kind of, yeah, I've been working on it like four, maybe four or five years by now. And plus, you know, it's just different style, the Puerto Rican style and uh, the WWE style. So it was, it was kind of like, uh, yeah, to go there and kind of like mold me into, their kind of style. Hmm. Do you uh, know how, or uh, well, was it your suggestion that OVW and WWC do a s- almost cross-promotional angle and bringing your, your brothers in as well to sort of get involved with it? Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. I, I, oh, have, have I just, have I just come out with maybe, I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't, <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been hitting the head a lot of times, so maybe, but I don't, I don't remember that. Oh, well, the, uh, there was a, uh, there was a couple of, uh, it, well, I've read, there's a couple of instances where, um, you turned bad guy, I think, in OVW because... Uh, oh, no, I think, actually, you might have turned bad guy in Puerto Rico saying you were going to WWE and, uh, you know, you were too good for the place and th- all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, but, I, 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 yeah, I think that was just us, though. I don't know. Well, I don't know. No, I think OVW let us record some stuff over in Louisville. So, I mean, yeah, it was kind of... I won't say it was a full-on joint venture, but it was, you know, they, we had their permission to, like, record some stuff over in Louisville. Right. Is... um. How do the sort of two uh, compare as far as, you know, the the entire product over WWC? I mean, I imagine there's quite a few, you know, differences. Yeah, it's a big difference. Um, but, you know, the same, they probably had a better production budget than we had down in Puerto Rico. Hmm. Uh, but the difference would be that we, you know, I'd already really worked in front of like 10,000, 12,000 people. And OVW, you go there, you work sometimes in front of 50, sometimes 100, maybe if you're lucky, a couple of hundred. So it was, just, it was different adjusting uh to that but other than that it was kind of not, not i don't not much difference really yeah uh did you was it sort of hard to get motivated to you know go from ten thousand people to about 50 and just looking oh geez if I sort uh, of made a mistake no man getting to getting to try and getting into wwe is motivation enough you know what i mean i was like uh, i just knew i when i got this i'm not going back home i want to you know i'm gonna i'm gonna see this through that was my main my main goal yes. uh, i've read this right and apparently back in puerto rico you're gonna have it wasn't billed as a cross promotional thing, but you were going to have a match with Abyss from TNA at the time, and it never got off the ground. Uh, do you remember why? Uh, just because I think Abyss was in TNA, and I was uh, I wasn't with WWE, but I was with uh, OVW, so it was kind of like uh, two different, I guess, two different promotions. Yeah, so yeah, I don't think they wanted uh, that to happen. That's fair enough. Then I don't suppose you remember yeah, because enough, yes. I. I uh... I um, uh, used to listen to Jim Cornette's podcast quite a lot, and he used to always talk about the issues that he used to have with John Laurinaitis as far as uh, John sort of pulling talent, you know, at a moment's notice and that kind of thing. Was that anything you were privy to at the time, or was that just all office stuff uh, away from you? No, but well, you, you could see it, you know. You could see something. You'd see uh, Cornette flipping out in the back, you know, where they'd say, oh, they call somebody up and he'd have him in a, in a hated angle or something or a main event angle, and all of a sudden, you know. So, But, you know... <laughs> That's that's just what it was. That's what OVW was for, you know, to to get them ready for, for WWE. Yeah, I get that, it. I get that. Uh, you know, Cornette had a lot of pride in, in, uh, you know, his his product, but also, you know, WWE. What they wanted was just to, to get their stars ready. The uh, actual next question I actually had was, do you remember the first time Jim Cornette lost his mind in a fit of anger? Uh, there were so many, and I was just, <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah, you just kind of look forward to him, like, oh, who's he mad at now? You know what I mean? So. What's going on there? But that was just like, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you see a guy do his finishing or something, that's because one of the things you look forward to, seeing Cornette do his thing. <laughs> uh, did you or anyone else, like, figure out the best way to prod him, just to set him off, you know? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think I tried to. I just got, no, in OVW, I just tried to 
you know, stay out of everybody's way, do my thing and just kind of move on. Yeah, uh, I actually also read about, uh, I, I wrote these questions about Jim Cornette because I find him like the most fascinating subject to always talk about and I bring him up at any opportunity I can. And then I wrote a couple of questions and then I realized that you and him maybe weren't like the uh, biggest fans of each other. Uh, how, he's, how he's, not, yeah, he's, not a, he's not a fan of mine. I don't have any problems with him. I don't have any issues with uh, Cornette. He has his opinions and he's entitled to them. So, but you know, there's no, no, no hard feelings on my end. I, but I know, you know, just cause he wasn't uh, my biggest fan doesn't mean I got anything against him. It's, you know, it is what it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. Were you, uh, were you not like, uh, was he not booking you maybe where you so or was he um, not giving you enough to do basically? Well, yeah, it's like, um, well, like I said, my main, like I said, my main goal was WWE. So I think maybe got offended that, uh, I didn't take, I don't know more, but I should have had more, but I, I knew, like, you know, this is not the end all be all. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what I do here. I mean, I'm a, I mean, I don't care if I'm the champ here or the tag champ or if I'm hitting an angle. My goal is to, you know, so I just wanted to kind of like go and do my work and move, move, move along. Yeah. So I, I don't, so I think that was his main issue with me. I guess he thought I was lazy or, or didn't, just didn't care or had no passion. But, you know, like I said, no offense to anybody, but, you know, OVW wasn't, uh, wasn't my goal. Yeah. Is it sort of like, you know, prison time? You keep your head down, do your time, and then, Look forward to getting out. Exactly. That's, that's yeah, exactly. I was going to serve my time and get on to where I wanted to be. I've always got to ask this, and if you don't want to answer it, I'll understand. Were you or anybody that you know uh, propositioned by Jim and his wife at any point to uh, join him with some freaky stuff? I've heard those rumors. No, I was never. Uh, I was never that that close to the to the the crew or whatever. So yeah. I never. I don't. I don't know if that's even. I don't know if that's true or not. But no, that was not. Uh, I didn't have the privilege of any of those invitations. No. <laughs> fair, <laughs> ah, fair enough then. Do you have any interaction? I don't even know if he managed you at one point. Uh, Kenny Boland, star maker Kenny Boland. Do you remember him? Kenny Boland. Yeah, yeah, Kenny Boland. He was, he was cool. He always knew how to where all the deals were in Houston. He'd always get you like a free dinner or a hookup here or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a, He was a character. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Rick Rogers. In fact, actually, uh, just before I talk about Rick Rogers, who was training you? I know Rick Rogers was head trainer, but um, training or molding or who was basically giving you the direction? Was it just Rip and Jim at the time? Uh, I was going way back. I think it was it was mainly Rip. Yeah, I learned a lot from Rip. I felt he had a he had a lot of knowledge to give. Yeah, uh, he had a lot of swear words to give. I imagine as well. A lot of yeah, and a lot of weird stories too. But but mainly yeah, but mainly he knew he knew his stuff in the ring. Uh, do you uh, remember any of the weird stories he told you? Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, also, I, 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 uh, he worked for my dad back in the day too, so I knew him from way, from way back. Mm. And he was just, he was just kind of like a, a weird guy, but uh, you know, but he, he knew, he knew his stuff. Um, who do you reckon in OVW during your time that maybe was like super talented and maybe WWE didn't give a fair shake to or even bring in? Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of guys, you know what I mean? Um, there was a guy in uh, Puerto Rico, they called him Shane the Glamour Boy. Or, you know, it was, I thought it was a great talent, but I guess because he looked, he looked too much like Ric Flair. He had the, the bleach blonde hair. Um, and he was, he wasn't, uh, you know, back in the day, they did like the, like the bigger guys. So he wasn't small, but he wasn't as big as other guys. And I felt like he was one guy that, that should have gotten a shot and never, he was actually, um, he used to tag with Val Venus. Hmm. And I remember they called up Val Venus, and then they never they never called his partner up, which I felt was a was a was a damn shame. Yeah. Was that back in Mexico? No, it was in Puerto Rico. Uh, oh, Puerto Rico. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, did you ever ask to be moved up? You know, like sort of expedite the situation to go WWE? Uh, you know, a bit quicker, or uh, did you? No, sort no. Of just I was just it? like I said, I just yeah, kept my mouth shut and just waited for them uh, to call me. 